Hello everyone, welcome to Sandy Frank's political podcast for a people's movement against the corporate fascist state. I'm your host, Sandy Frank, uh, and in <clears throat> today's episode where we're going to be talking about a lot of things again, uh, to kind of narrow down the topic of discussion, uh, the last episode was really uh, a lot about uh, this draft Bernie Sanders uh, movement. We talked a lot about uh, how how I feel is really the the futility of of this of of, of Bernie Sanders. This 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 one person that we're all hoping for who has said on numerous occasions that he has no interest in uh of 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 doing this he said he said on corporate media which is really what he is he's really just a corporate media politician but he has said on these programs that no he 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 has no interest in uh starting this third party movement of 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 the people you think you know, he, he was, if, uh, if Bernie Sanders was not, uh, willing to start this movement, this third party or third, you know, just different way political movement, uh, right after the, the democratic convention in Philadelphia, uh, that, that it's, that it's, uh, yeah, becoming very clear that he's 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 never going to. We look at what was offered to him, and of course, if Bernie Sanders had run third party in the election, he would have won by <coughs> uh, ridiculous margins. Uh, if if we had been able to to ensure uh, election integrity, which which we very well could have done, if if there was such a uh, a uh, huge kind of paradigm sh- paradigm shame uh, ch- uh, paradigm change in this country with 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 uh, a viable third party candidate who everyone would want to vote for nobody nobody wanted to vote for uh, Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump the you know the uh, the the polls or you know what would be called the results of of that election with Bernie Sanders as a uh, third party choice, uh, you know, we we see we see uh, almost fifty percent of the of the voting of registered voters in the United States uh, define themselves by outside of the of the Democratic and Republican Party. So I think what we really would have seen is is uh, a 50% margin going to Bernie Sanders and then a split between the establishment, the same type of candidate, the Clinton and the Trump, who are the same thing. Uh, we know this. Uh, <coughs> so there would have just been this uh, split between the two establishment parties. So, of course, that's what would have happened. Uh, and it was offered to Bernie Sanders uh who could have been the president right now, and we wouldn't be in the dire... Oh, God, dire is a nice word for what we're entering, and what we would be entering with Hillary Clinton as well. The same the same agenda was planned for the both of them. Don't, don't, don't fucking fool me that when Hillary Clinton became president, she wouldn't ramp up uh, Muslim, uh, banning Muslim countries that were bombing. Of course she would have. And all of her lackey supporters who are now going, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, uh, would, you know, would, uh, would be praising Hillary Clinton and saying that anyone who doesn't with her is, is a sexist and, uh, all of these things, uh, really if, uh, and then if Clinton had been the president, there would have been no... Of course, there would have been an anti-Clinton movement, as there was an anti, 
Obama movement, but there would have, of course, been no, um, there would have been no anti-Muslim ban movement coming from, uh, the conservative part of the country, as we say. Of course there wouldn't, because we just had eight years of Obama where there wasn't. So there's your fucking proof. But, you know, <laughs> definitely right now we're in a better situation than we would be in if, if Clinton was president. Because we'd all, you know, there would be the fire, all the, just a fire everywhere and people pretending they don't see it. Uh, but now, or at least coming out of the establishment corporate media, but uh, now we have a uh, an establishment corporate media, a uh, democratic establishment corporate media that is uh, sensationalizing and it being just completely jingoistic uh, about their coverage of Trump and the beautiful thing of what the corporate media is doing right now is they don't realize they are uh, signing their own death uh, death wish the democratic establishment corporate media is slowly but surely killing itself uh, with the sensationalized uh, anti-Trump uh, movement because they're only making uh, Donald Trump stronger and they are the Democratic media is only ensuring that the any anyone who even kind of considers themselves a progressive, whatever that means, let's say, not wanting to bomb eight Muslim countries is a progressive value. It's it's a fucking human value, but whatever. But uh, you know, we uh, we would see the corporate media. Uh, we see them uh, destroying themselves because you know everyone is being awakened to the bullshit coming out of <laughs> coming out of these these major institutions uh it's february 12th 2007 uh and you know you see all over youtube and twitter and and facebook they really ran down the uh well because when we talk about corporate media we're not just talking about cnn and msnbc and npr and all this shit when we're talking about corporate media, we need to think of things like Saturday Night Live. Uh, and so it's it's Sunday, it's Sunday afternoon on a a beautiful snowy uh, you know uh, snowfall in the in the Northeast. Uh, but we have um, things like uh, Comedy Central and Saturday Night Live and Hollywood. Uh, to be honest. Uh, that and and it's Sunday morning I'm saying and so all of the <laughs> there's Saturday Night Live videos everywhere it's literally you're not allowed to look at a computer or at social media on a Sunday morning or a Monday morning in the fucking US without having one of these uh, YouTube Saturday Night Live corporate media propaganda bullshit videos shoved down your fucking throat or Stephen Colbert, or Jimmy Kimmel, or Jimmy Fallon, or or Trevor Noah, or Chris Hardwick, or Samantha B, or uh, all of the all of these hacks. Um, so you know, and 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 what is this corporate media extension uh, coming out of the uh, the corporate media Saturday Night Live? And I watched some of it. Some of it's pretty funny. I'm not trying to call these people shitty comedians or whatever, but I mean, if a comedian means being a political satirist and not being a a, a fucking evil fascist, then they're pretty bad comedians. But you know, if it's about if it's about jokes, yeah, it's pretty funny. The jack, you know, the little jibes and witticisms. They point at Trump and only Trump, not realizing that they're only making Trump strong. Well, they realize. I'm sorry. They they the people who are putting these videos out and creating this content at the highest levels and you know all all of all the a lot of the levels. A lot of you know a lot of people who are involved in 
these New York, California film production things. And believe me, this is where I come from. I worked uh, in film production in New York City, uh, film production and media and, and, and uh, you know, film companies. I worked uh, in film companies. I worked on film shoots. I had a lot of different jobs for for about seven years. I, I was uh, involved in in all of these uh, different kinds of New York media companies. A lot of people are really stupid. A lot of people are really just ignorant kind of commonplace people you meet, um, at least in the United States of America, who don't really think about anything political. And if you just listen to them for a little while, you'll know exactly what they're always thinking about, which is, you know, parties and their friends and putting pictures on Instagram and and traveling places and taking pictures there and you know going out to lunch and taking pictures and then showing each other pictures of different lunches at lunch and these things there's you know we you know there's and this isn't proof but the you know the fact is that the United States of America and this is the entire world I'm not just sh- uh, shitting on the United States of America. The the whole world has these type of problems, especially West, the West, Western countries, Europe, and uh, the Americas. Um, so, <clears throat> but in these, you know, NBC, Comedy Central institutions, you know, there are also a lot of people who know exactly what it's, what's up and exactly, because look at how much these people make. Good God, I've I've never seen more uh, miserable, uh, career-minded people than uh, some of these these media career professionals in 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 New York City and you know, from California, and uh, you know it's it's ridiculous what and these people you know, but we're talking about how the higher ups in these NBC corporate media outlets you know they they know the score they they know they want to keep their million dollar paychecks they want to keep the the tenuous control of power because that you know they have definitely have a lot of problems if they're if they know what they're doing to our world and can you know continue to do it but you know of course when you get handed seven million dollars like rachel maddow or however much uh you know, Saturday Night Live people make or Stephen Colbert makes millions. Um, you know, we uh, it does something to you. Let's be honest. I'm not I'm not calling out Rachel Maddow and Stephen Colbert from a place of hatred towards these people as individuals. No, I'm calling them victims. Stephen Colbert and John Stewart and. Trevor Noah and Rachel Maddow and Chris Hayes and Joy Reid, all these people, they're they're victims. If (laughs) if you're handed a seven million dollar paycheck, that's the same thing as just being handed a a uh, ridiculous cocaine addiction. When you get seven million dollars and are just you know given, it's just given to you, you know. Something happens in a lot of people's heads that makes them, you know, need this amount of money. And the thought of not making seven million dollars, making a modest living and living fucking modestly by your your means, which is to say, living within the you know your your health in perspective, uh, it scares them. the The thought of living healthy for these people scares them. Uh, like the drug addict, like the cocaine addict, like the alcoholic like the gambling addict, like any type of addict. Of course, there's addiction to money and addiction to power. And of course there are these things. Uh, And we need to understand that these addictions, you know, can be worse than any type of cocaine addiction because power and money, you know, they they could do a lot more than just a, a buzz from cocaine. A lot more. If you know how to use it like these people. So, you know, we see the corporate media (laughs) completely doing the anti-Trump show. 
all the Saturday Night Live, uh, Saturday Night Live episodes are. They're just the Donald Trump show for 90 minutes. Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump. Uh, praising Republicans, praising Democrats, praising Elizabeth Warren. Good God, we'll get to Elizabeth Warren again in a moment. Good God. But raising her up and raising Jake Tapper up, the, the fucking, the, 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 you know, great idol of, of journalistic, uh, you know, decay. Good God, Jake Tapper, this, this, when, when we get our people's revolution and we truly change the world out of this state, uh... Uh, Jake Tapper, Jake Tapper won't even be a footnote in in the uh, the history book of of where the corporate media, you know, where media was destroyed and corporate media reigned for for decades. Jake Tapper, this this nothing, this this shit fucking, you know, this shit Gibbon, uh, he he won't even be he, uh, a footnote in in what was wrong with journalism. His he's so nothing. He'll be a he'll be a passing mention in in like one, you know, very detail oriented uh, journalism course on you know early twenty first century uh, corporatist fascistic propaganda. He's he's such a nothing, uh, Jake Tapper. He's you know nothing you know, and this is this is the resistance, and this is the anti Trump media. Uh, well, that's really all it is. It's just the anti-Trump show, but uh, yeah, Jake Tapper is 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 really just uh, a passing thought in a in a in a corporate fascist uh, propaganda machines, you know, shit throwing and and, and divisiveness. So what what is the corporate media really doing? Uh what 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 are they what are they really uh doing? I mean, they're not putting any they're not actually practicing journalism. They're just preserving uh the the state of the corporate fascist state for as long as possible. It's they're on a <laughs> they're on a they're on the defensive now, of course, and they know it, and we know it, and all we need to do is organize and unify, and we could take them down in a day. It would be so simple, and we could change the world in a day, uh, as opposed to, you know, you know, we, of course, our political revolution, our people's political revolution will be difficult, but, um, you know, it, it's... First of all, it's not as difficult as what were the course we're still on now. And second of all, you know, yes and no, it will be difficult. When we finally get together and the 90% and the 95% and the 99% finally topple uh, these cunt warts like the banking interests and uh, defense interests and war interests and, and fossil fuel interests and and uh, big pharmaceutical interests and all other big interests, you know. Yes and no, it's, it will be difficult to take them down. This could happen in a day. This, this, this is just this is like lighting a match on a uh, on a uh, an oily gas station. This will uh, one spark is going to set off our our people's movement. Uh, but. You know, God knows how, you know, what will happen, if it will be violent, if it will it be peaceful. I, I can't answer that, but from a, from a moral revolutionary standpoint, it needs to happen. Uh, but we, we, we talk about the corporate media being nothing on the offensive, and we go back to what I got off on this tangent on was the drafting Bernie movement, which is what we started with, uh, <coughs> and we see Bernie Sanders as as just as terrible a uh, a, a a a a a a uh, uh, an exemption of the corporate media. The what Bernie Sanders is and 
quite honestly, has always been, if we're going to talk, if, we'll talk about that in a second, but just since after he endorsed Hillary Clinton, uh, what did he say today? Uh, you know, he, he, what is he saying on February 12th? This is the big story now about Bernie Sanders and Jake Tapper and Donald Trump. When Donald Trump was talking to Jake, uh, Jakey Jake Tapper, uh, Donald Trump, or, or maybe Donald Trump claimed it on Twitter. I don't, I'm not, I'm not that sure. But Donald Trump said, has said that Bernie Sanders was cut off on CNN, Jake Tapper's show for, uh, re- you know, he's, people were saying that Bernie started to refer to CNN as the fake news. And, he, you know, he very well might not have been. Well, and he, you know, he, he wasn't. I heard the tape, but that's not really the point. And then, and then Donald Trump went on to say that uh, that he, uh, you know, Bernie Sanders was cut off by CNN when Bernie Sanders started t- talking about fake news. Uh, you know, it's not. I'm not saying it's true that Bernie did that because I don't think he really did do that. And, uh, you know, it's no surprise. I, I would be happy if he did because CNN is fake news and that doesn't make me a Trump supporter. Uh, but then Bernie Sanders and all his corporate media divisiveness, all of his anti-GOP bullshit, as if the intelligent point Bernie Sanders is making is that, oh, it's not just Donald Trump corporate media, it's also Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell. You know. And th- this is what uh, Bernie Sanders considers as revolutionary. It's more partisan hackery. Uh, but we have Bernie Sanders now coming out and on CNN, I believe, and saying that, uh, you know, he never said that and Donald Trump is a liar and he doesn't think CNN is fake news. Oh, great, Bernie Sanders. The same corporate media that you're railing against and have been railing against, he's Bernie Sanders is such a hypocrite. He he literally just came out like two weeks ago talking about like how corporate media is, is so is so dangerous. And now, oh, CNN is not fake news now. Bernie Sanders, you flip flopping hypocrite. Bernie Sanders, uh, what a ridiculous uh, person. But uh, and that doesn't make me a uh, a Donald Trump supporter, and that does not make me completely against everything that Bernie Sanders claims to be for. And that doesn't make me anti-Bernie Sanders to criticize Bernie Sanders for his bullshit. But now we seriously are thinking about, yeah, Bernie Sanders, who has said on multiple occasions on the corporate media, which he is nothing but a shill for, he has said on multiple occasions that he will never be doing what Abraham Lincoln did, and he will never be doing what literally is is what they teach in high school, a United States dumbass high school that I learned about in fucking Catholic conservative alt-right uh, a high school, you learn that the history of, of any type of actual change and difference making in the United States comes from third party voting. If you know anything about United States history is that third party movements and third party revolutions and revolutions are literally what the entirety entire history of the United States is based on. Abraham Lincoln stood up to the fucking Whig party and he flatly said that no, I'm 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 a complete abolitionist. I'm not about it. And him and a- uh, Abraham Lincoln, you know, left uh you know, moved away from the li- Whigs and and formed the Republican Party, which has existed for uh, you know, over 100 years. Okay. So you know, these, these criticizers of Jill Stein and third party movements and our independent people's revolution and Chris Hedges and, uh, uh, you know, Jill Stein and all, you know, all these people with them right now, uh, these people who criticize us, criticize Chris Hedges, uh, you know they 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 have a, they don't even have a high schooler's education, uh, understanding of, the United States change in the United States of America, which is through third, uh, you know, third, you know, people's individual uh, uh, revolutionary movements. That's they they're literally calling third parties dangerous when they are literally the only way third parties ended slavery. Third parties, 
you know, I'll do I'll do another video on this. I'll do a whole history on the history of third parties in the United States because, you know, we have the death of the Federalists, the death of the Democratic Republicans, the death of the Whigs, the death of the you know we have Bull Moose, uh, we have Teddy Roosevelt, and uh, we have of course the the complete change of the Democrat Democratic Party itself, and you know we have. I'll do I'll I'll do another video on on third party voting uh but uh we of course have Bernie Sanders doing nothing but tricking and tricking Ber which is which is the the problem here with 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 our with our movement is the stagnation of the these Bernie crats as if as if all of these people are the smartest people in the world Anyone who supported Bernie Sanders in the uh, 2006 Democratic primary is automatically some political genius thinker. There's how many people voted for Bernie who, you know, the, of course, rigged fraudulent number. Let's just say it was 13 million. That's a lot of differing opinions within 13 million people. You know, the great thing that Bernie Sanders did in the in the primary campaign is that he did bring a lot of people together. Uh... He did uh, bring a lot of uh, uh, different kinds of, not even progressives. He was bringing together independents and Republicans and uh, all different kinds of people wanted to vote for him. But just within the quote-unquote progressive movement, as to speak what a great politician Bernie Sanders is, it would take that for a good thing or a bad thing. But Bernie Sanders was able to get me to organize with people like Sam Cedar and Jenk Uger and David Pakman and uh, these these fake progressive, uh, super corporate, hypocritical, uh, uh, just ridiculous people like Jenk Uger. Bernie Sanders actually got me into a political campaign which I've always been a political activist and you know politically active on a lot of different issues but Bernie Sanders was the first uh, actual candidate I I had ever worked for and endorsed and uh, you know had 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 faith in uh, uh, and uh, you know uh, he 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 was so good at at, at 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 communication and his great message, the great political message. That's how you win. You, you know that Bernie Sanders message is uh, is 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 how is how you 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 win. Uh, but uh, I mean, I mean his but his message not being the only thing. You know, a message Barack Obama ran on a message and he lied. You know, as as days goes by, seeing Bernie Sanders as this shill of the corporate media, uh, it makes me think more and more that if Bernie Sanders uh, had gotten the nomination and had not been cheated and had beaten Trump by a, a 50 percent margin, uh, I don't know if Bernie, maybe Bernie Sanders would be the Barack Obama, the wolf in the sheep's clothing. I don't know. Bernie Sanders is a good uh He's very useful for the Democratic Party. Like, I'm not going to get into crazy theories about Bernie Sanders and maybe maybe the Democrats wanted Trump and and put up. I mean, that doesn't that doesn't make a lot of Bernie Sanders didn't lose Hillary Clinton the 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 win. She lost it herself. And imagine if Bernie Sanders had never been in the race and it had been a complete Trump. Republican narrative against against Hillary Clinton for for a year. Good God, um, maybe oh my God, maybe she would have uh, been in jail before the fucking election. Good God, who knows? But uh, you know, Bernie Sanders is a complete uh, sheepdogging uh, you know, liar and the. Uh, uh, a corporate shell for the corporate media. I, I've called him this before. Uh, he is uh, the the Muppet grandpa of imperialism, with his Keith Ellisons and his warmongering and his 
And that's another great that's another way that Bernie Sanders is really a fantastic politician, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh he he uh you know, Bernie Sanders is a total warmonger and he was even before he ran and you know, he was he was able to not really trick any not trick anyone, but because I do think if he would have become president he would have been anti anti war and he would have started the started the end of like it's some process but he would have ended the wars uh uh but no let's bernie sanders is a warmonger he uh we'll do an another video on bernie sanders uh policies so oh my goodness but uh he uh you know we uh uh, you know he's he's become this this mouthpiece of uh, of the establishment, the anti-Trump uh, movement, and nothing else. Not not another single word. But that's the the danger of uh, of what Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren are doing right now because of the the milk toast corporate fascist media, uh, CNN and Nimbus NBC. And the Young Turks and uh, and Saturday Night Live—they're nothing but uh, an anti-Trump show, which is the 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 of course more baser of the of the of the ideologies, but but really just as base as what uh, Sanders and Warren are doing, which is it's the anti-GOP show, as if this is some p a better intelligent point. Coming from uh, a more intelligent place. Oh, oh, you think it's uh, just Trump? Then you don't really know anything. It's these, uh, it's these Republicans who are trying to take it. Even though the Democrats had control of the government for eight years and four years, they literally could have done whatever the fuck they want, and of course nothing happened. And 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 Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren are trying to trick us into thinking the same as the rest of the corporate media that. Uh, is trying to trick us is that you know they're trying to say that the Democratic Party and CNN and MSNBC and NPR and NBC and Siren Night Live <coughs> are not the problem and and when the entire country is not fooled anymore no one is buying this it is only making everyone angrier I think back to uh, the election the campaign uh between Trump and Clinton in like August and September and October. Oh God, when it was getting bad in September and October, we we can now think back to these 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 times. Uh, you know, we have uh, and when we I I think of all of the corporate NPR reports I was listening to. And I, I listen to NPR a lot. I hate NPR. It's the worst of the worst. But uh, uh, the reports they would, the lies they would be running about how how ahead in the polls Clinton is, and how and how nothing's wrong, and how you know two starkly different visions for America. And it would have Hillary Clinton saying something generic like "We're together." And Donald Trump saying something inflammatory. That is not to say Donald Trump is not an inflammatory, dangerous person. Just to say that Hillary Clinton is literally the same thing as Donald Trump. And the same things would be happening right now if Hillary Clinton was the president. The same kind of appointees from the same kind of corporate interests. Chosen by the same small group of people. Uh, you know, there would be mus a Muslim ban. We would probably already be at war with Iran under Hillary Clinton. We would probably already already be at war with Russia and have already been killed even before Hillary Clinton was inaugurated if she had won. Barack Obama would have put those sanctions on in a second against, uh, God, who knows what their plan was. Uh, yeah, if Clinton won, the, the vamping up of, uh, of the war... Uh, and so much more. The economy, like everything, Trump. That there would have been, of course, she would have uh, deregulated uh, uh, the 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 banking regulations. It's what she fucking gave speeches about to do. She was being sold as a as a more right Barack Obama. 
so Trump with 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 a, a, a prettier smile uh, you know we uh, but but at, well, NPR is one of the worst of the worst of these corporate uh, shill nonsense bullshit uh, you know we uh, <coughs> during the uh, during the the campaign uh, it was nothing but uh how you know raising up Trump as this Nazi raising up his yeah he has no ideas Hillary Clinton had no ideas either they 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 have ideas they're just terrible ideas made for a small group of people and to hurt everyone else um but we uh we see uh the, the corporate media just in a ridiculous uh, ridiculous state and they know and they know what people think of them and they know what people are going to do once we organize our independent movement they know this uh, to know if they're gonna react with violence to squash us or if they're just going to accept that, you know, this is this is this is the way that people are, are will be moving just because of the evidence we have for for our ideas. The evidence is overwhelming that you know it's nothing to do with some human progress myth. It's everything to do with the facts of 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 that we we now know how to run a sustainable society where people can be uh, healthy and happy and and have meaning. And if people want to 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 prosper yeah you can do that too you can you can do whatever you want you can be a you could be a great business leader but the point is you're not going to be able to hurt anyone else while you do it you know we talk about the venus project and we talk about the zeitgeist movement and we talk about these uh, you know the ideas coming from these people like jock fresco and peter joseph about uh ideas for sustainable solution based democratically republic uh societies uh you know where where people's needs and people's healths and people's people's happinesses are 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 what is worshiped and not not the worship of money and power so you know and the the, uh, the elites and the corporate media know this they know that this is the way that everyone wants society to be to be running and everyone knows that this is the way that it, everything should be working right now because of the evidence but then we have the corporate media raising up people all over the world raising up trumps raising up uh these nazi movements all over the world to stop these solution-based policies and to stop uh our solution-based politics of the of the policies that that, that we bring up here today a sustainable society based on based on education and based on uh health uh and 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 uh yeah health if environmental health uh <coughs> but uh and to say that you know the corporate media and the corporate elites don't know this is ridiculous and they're just waiting for us to do something about it they're not going to do it there's no there's no great happy person you know there's no person who has all this money and all this power who's he's who's who's about to come out and start saying you know these these things it's, it's us it's the people it's uh you know Jill Stein is the person with the most you know money and power who's who's willing to uh who, well, who 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 has been standing up because she believes in these things, uh, but uh, and not to say that that Jill Stein is at all some uh, corporate elite. Of course, she's not. She made a lot of money when she was a doctor and a you know and a smart person. We're talking about someone who is truly entrepreneurial, not some Betsy DeVos, uh, you know, rid, born into. Uh, a billion dollar family we're talking about a self-made well i'm not sure how i'm not going to even say self-made but jill stein 
you know, someone who who makes her own way. But uh, uh, you know, we talk about uh, you know, we talk about the way that we understand that our society should now be being uh, run the way that helps all people uh, and the way that works not just that it hurt, helps all people is that all of the data shows us that that these Venus Project zeitgeist movement types of sustainable societies you know this is this is the way it works because this is the way science works this is this is how we use science to to learn uh, the uh, you know the best ways to uh, uh, to run a society, as in how how do you help all the people, uh, and and still have a, a society that that's not uh, impoverished, and you know a society that can create uh, uh, you know can can actually uh, you know cover the the needs of of nigh on 8 billion people uh, and again you know again and again and again and again and again I'm, I'm very uh, I'm very repetitive I know but uh, you know this is this is the way to go the corporate media knows this and that's why you see the Donald Trump sensationalism uh, jingoism show uh, every every night uh Every, and every day, uh, we, uh, but Bernie Sanders and the Bernie Sanders draft, Bernie draft, uh, draft him when he has said time and time again that no, he's Democratic toady and he is, he's nothing but a psyop, uh, you know. To treat anyone like Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren uh, as anything but the enemy at this point. Again, I, I've said again that Elizabeth Warren is uh, she's an Exxon commercial featuring uh, a, a same-sex parents. She's nothing but a she's a psyop. She's a psychological operation meant to manipulate you by the corporate media. Uh, she's nothing but a, a, a Coca-Cola commercial with gay parents. Uh, she's, you know, she's nothing, she's nothing but an Adidas commercial about, oh God, you see this Adidas commercial? It's, uh, trying to, to co-opt the, uh, the Antifa, anti-fascist movement with the imagery of Mussolini's death photo and, uh, you know, a lot of uh, black and red people in the streets and alleyways with bats and Adidas, Adidas, uh, a company that has literally since its foundation uh, ha has been using mainly slave labor outside of the United States, slave labor to make its products. Adidas is saying anything about an anti-fascist movement. Adidas, are you are you fucking kidding me? with this is Adidas commercial I just saw, I have nothing. I have no problem with uh, Mussolini death photo imagery and Antifa, uh, you know, street revolution uh, bashing Nazis. I have no problem with this uh, imagery. Don't get me wrong. I have a problem with slave labor. Uh, 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 profiteers, Adidas, slave labor profiteers using slave labor in Asia, in South Asia, in <laughs> all over the Pacific Islands, uh, all over the world, not just these places, but using uh, slave labor to make their, their fucking bourgeois uh, sweatpants, their fucking Tony Soprano uh to fucking clothe the state of New Jersey for because of for uh, on slave labor, and and Adidas and the corporate media, and their little production company, the people who are the problem with our society are telling us anything about anti-fascism. Adidas, the biggest fascists in the world. Every everyone at the CEO board deserves to ha be 
uh, killed and like Benito Mussolini, and they're uh, you know hung upside down, and they're uh, you know they are now going to be the ones to lead the the anti-fascist resistance when they are the biggest corporate media anti-fascists in the entire fucking world. Oh goodness, Adidas. Uh, the Adidas company and the Patriots, these these people are going to lead the revolution. Adidas and the Patriots and Jake Tapper. Oh, God, Jake Tapper. So, what a, 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 not even a footnote, a nothing in, in the, in the, in the great, in the, in the, in the, you know, what will be taught to future generations about, about journalism when we, when we take down the corporate fascist state. Ugh. Jake Tapper won't even be a Marie Antoinette. He won't even be, uh, uh, you know, the the czars of uh, of Russia. Uh, he won't even be that. He he's such a nothing, and Adidas is such is such a baloney, uh, you know. But uh, you know, now we talk about. Uh, revolution uh and when i talk about you know bashing nazis i'm not you know of of course our main goal is not of course violence our main goal is of course revolution and the change of the the political system and the economy and the change now of these people uh you know we have uh uh but you know, to say that, but then to lie about Martin Luther King and say that uh, he uh, he never uh, you know understood violence as something that 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 will happen when the conditions are are as bad as they were then and as bad as they are now. Uh, but uh. We uh, we want to understand that our revolution needs to come from a place of transformative change, and not just from uh, f- blindly drafting a Bernie Sanders movement leader uh, uh, into uh, just to just to follow and. Uh, because when we talk about the French Revolution and when we talk about things like this, you know, the um, a major problem, of course, was that when the French Revolution happened, it just led to another uh, state that didn't didn't represent the people either. It just represented the power interests. Um, you know, we t- uh, so we talk about the uh, the the French Revolution and. Uh, we uh, we 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 want to learn from the French Revolution in that, you know, they just blindly followed these leaders. Is what what the draft Bernie movement really is, which is just uh, you know, trying to hero worship Bernie Sanders, uh, into into some bullshit uh, movement, uh, that. You know, if we're not careful and we just blindly go along with 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 wanting to just have Bernie Sanders be our our Muppet grandpa of imperialism, we're never going to get any real change. We're not we're not going to uh, you know be able to 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 break the paradigm and, and to change the society in the way we want to. Uh, so that's where. A lot of these revolutions came wrong, uh, and that's that's the importance of coming together and organizing our uh, a strategy of how to uh, of how to get real change. We 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 talk about uh, wanting to learn from the past and the mistakes of the past, and how you know the French Revolution really didn't lead to a a more social, a more people oriented political system. It just led to the more the, the power interest shifting to other the uh, people who wanted power um, you know we 
it was you know it just led to the napoleonic era and no real change but it the, but the reason why th- things like that happened is that the movements were just blindly following politicians and not transformatively and uh, educating the citizenry and and making the the citizenry uh self-reliant all right so we need to not worship leaders like bernie sanders and like we can only move forward with a with the people's movement if we have bernie sanders because he ain't coming folks he's made his choice and it's it's he it's it's made up it's it's he made up his mind bernie uh you know he's not gonna he's not gonna be with us for this movement uh until unless we can actually form uh 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 uh, a real organization which would not be difficult it's what everyone wants you know when it's something when our organization is something like c is is on the is on par with, with something like cnn or uh or or msnbc when we can point to our people's organization as a uh, as as something of of you know that can rival msnbc especially in the terms of getting getting our propaganda out uh then maybe we can have bernie sanders but it won't be before them folks it won't be before them but we need to understand that revolution comes from our you know we need to worship our our revolutionary values and the things we want and the changes we want to see in the world we have to worship ideas and not lone politicians like muppet grandpa of imperialism bernie sanders or or exxon mobile commercial featuring gay parents liz warren and it's not gonna come from them or or corporate media which is nothing but some alcoholic spouse or abusive parent who smacks the 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 you smacks you around and fucking uh then tells you they're not doing anything and they don't even know why you think they're doing anything wrong it's called abuse folks the corporate media is nothing but abusive uh they're nothing but uh fucking abusive uh abusive uh spouses just smacking us around when we know good and well how our world should be run right now we know exactly uh we we are the people with the ideas the progressive movement we are the ones who know what uh who know who know how what science tells us is the way that uh is a society that works for all people we, you know we, we we know how to do it and the corporate media is doing nothing but trying to prevaricate us and uh and to and to deflect from us and to take our voice away so we really need that kind of our own type of giant media our own mass media that's non-corporate non-corporate mass media is what we need as a people's movement to get our get our uh our our messages out so that's my next video will be about uh the the mass media we want to create we're not against mass media we're against uh corporate media we're not against unity and uh a a global dialogue as well as local dialogues and individual dialogues we we you know we, this is this is the liberty movement this is the real liberty movement not the alex jones uh donald trump bullshit don't don't buy that buy us we are the movement we are the change but Yes, the corporate media needs to be stopped. It needs to be divested. As we divest from banks and oil companies, we need to divest from corporate media and get yeah, um, and more independent mass media out there. We need to. Uh, and yeah, this this it won't be easy, but it won't be as hard as we think. We could have this in a day. They're just waiting for us to do it the Jake Tappers and the Saturday Night Lives and the and the real power interests who who are behind the Jake Tappers and the Saturday Night Lives they're waiting for us to make our move and you know when we tell them what's what you know we we have we have a good chance of uh you know making our manifesto and 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 getting what we want because they fear us they fear us 
and and you know they will decide what kind of revolution this will be uh but yeah divest from corporate media don't trust bernie sanders or elizabeth warren or the democratic establishment and the entire establishment is our enemy and our people's movement is the only way that we can stop them so thank you for listening to this episode please uh like comment uh subscribe follow uh you know whatever comment and comment tell me what you think and tell give me your opinions and tell me your ideas about how how we do this tell me tell me where you disagree with me tell me where i'm getting it wrong but uh tell me and and say something and speak up and get politically active okay so i'm your host sandy frank thank you for listening and i will see you in the next one